previously on Fabulous. I believe so. Hmm. I believe so because uh, most people think of marriage as I'm going to get I'm going to get something. I'm hmm. going to get love. I'm going to get money. Hmm. I'm going to get a name. You know, I, I sometimes I laugh at those women that sometimes a woman may go into a marriage because of the name she will have. It's been a privilege to be having conversations with these amazing women that I call my friends, my sisters, my family. And then from us to you, we're sharing our journey about how far we have come. We're not saying that we know it all or that we have arrived. What we're saying is that we've learned some things over the years that we believe that will support you to make your process a whole lot easier and a whole lot better. And today we want to share freely from our overflow, whatever that is for both of us or for the different people that we're speaking with. And we'll support you also to try and cultivate what your overflow is. So I'm here today with Mrs. Henrietta of Suffolk, who has become a sister to me, a younger sister, let me emphasize that. Whom I love dearly. Um, I take her children as mine and um, basically they're my family as well. So we're sitting here today and we're having a regular normal conversation that we'll have off camera, on camera today to tell you a little bit, give you a little bit of insight as to how we manage it all. So you're welcome. Thank you, Tish. It's good to have you. Thank you for having me. Share the CC and I realize I have to create things to have my sisters around me because <laughs> if I don't create it, me who will be a twenty twenty five I have a new year. So but we will all do better I hope. She's one of the ladies I met and I think my first attraction to her was the deliberate action she, she took with her children. She's very particular with her children and I want to start the conversation with, from there as to how she decided from that very young age to be so specific and particular with each and every single one of her children. She had a vision for their lives and she had a plan of how to support them to get what it is that her vision is for them or her collective vision with her husband is so the family vision for each of those children but that's one of the major attractions um for me so i saw you i remember with the la yeah. um Della Dem. Mm -hmm. and then that's one of the things that stood out to me and i still stands out to me and it's something that i really admire about you Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Tish. So, um, yes, it's been almost nine years mm -hmm. since we met. And it was on a parent forum, like you said. I was a first time mother to my son mm -hmm. and um, a very young mother for that matter. So, I needed to learn. I, I needed to learn from people who have done it and have done it well so I can. I can also impact in my younger ones. So I remember through Ethel, Mrs. Mouth. Mm. Okay. We met. Yeah. And you've been a blessing since then. Thank Together you. with uh, your husband, Michael. You were the coaches mm. and we were learning from you. And I learned a lot. I really learned a lot and I thank God for how far he's brought us because mm. I have three children and um, they are all unique. <laughs> in their own. <laughs> they are all unique. Um, each and every one of them presents their personality in a, a very different way. But you guys made it easy. And I say thank you. Thank you too. Um, so how do you relate with each of the children? What would you say some of their personalities are? How would you differentiate them? What are some of the things that sets them apart and how do you manage? All three of them are different. I have... I have one who is very emotional and reserved. I have one who is very outgoing and I have one who is neither here nor there. Mm, mm, mm. 
and so um sometimes what you say that the other person may take it you know cool may not send down well with the other and so i i always have to find ways and means of presenting issues to them in you know very different ways because the one who is very emotional wouldn't even want to share his issues with you <laughs> when the other you know mm. siblings are around we my husband and i made a deliberate you know effort for one of us to be closer to them mm. as much as possible mm. so i decided to stay manage the business from my own t in my own terms yeah so i can have quality time you know with them and you know boys are different from from girls yeah. girls have their own special needs <laughs> they want mommy's time so i know that you run a business now a whole hospital for that matter <laughs> and then you also have at some point you're reading law I know that it's not even all over yet. Um, and you're still making all the time for the children. And I know you're close to your husband too. So how are you navigating the role, the multiple roles that you play? Mm. The boss babe, the, <laughs> the husband babe, <laughs> the children babe. Yes. How are you managing them? Hmm. How I do it, I have no idea. It's just a piece of work. <laughs> but then it comes to support system. Mm. Love that. Yeah. Um, I I run the hospital and then I also have a side business, you know, and I all all has to be done. You need to um, juggle it in between so the other side does not suffer. Mm. As much as I want to be closer to my children and family, and also empower myself by you know educating myself, I thank God for some. Or the team I work with, mm. and also for my mom. Mm. Yeah, I am blessed with a very loving partner, and so um, both of us are always schooling. <laughs> so <laughs> we plan it in a way. When he's schooling, I'm a bit, you know, free. Mm. And when I'm, I'm schooling, or when I'm busy, he's also making time for the family. Um, the support system is also very important. My mom always comes to you for us, mm -hmm. and I am blessed with three younger um, sisters. Ah. I'm the big sis, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I get my sisters also supporting me from mm -hmm. time to time. But mm -hmm. then again, um, by the grace of God, my children are very independent. And so, um, whilst we are both away, they know what to do, mm -hmm. they know what time to do what. And um, yeah, they are also very helpful. So they do not stress me much, <laughs> and so <laughs> much, and so I'm able to, you know, manage the hospital, the clean, um, the shop, and then also with my school. But all in all, it hasn't been easy. Mm. Um, but it's been good, and it's been good from day one. Yeah, yeah. Where I cannot go on, I fall on my support system. Mm. What does that support system look like for you? I know you've talked about your younger siblings, you've talked about your mom. Um, I've been blessed to meet them both. So at least I've met two, I've met your mom and I've met one of your sisters. Mm -hmm. And yes, indeed, they're good support. But outside of that support system, who else would you consider a support system? How does that work? And how have you cultivated it? Mm -hmm. So, I apart from my family, I'll say my, my workers, uh -huh. I have an amazing team. I have a team of young, energetic guys, <laughs> professionals on the job, and they are like family to me. Mm. I have invested in them, and I make them feel part of the business. And so, even in my absence, they run the business as though we, we are around. Yeah top of my shop girls to the clinic i have amazing nurses my general manager is awesome they just got me covered mm. because um we have 
we have actually invested in them and we've made them feel part of the business. So without my physical presence, work still goes on. Mm. And yeah, these are my support system. I like that. Yeah. We, we should go back, going back to the children okay. being independent. Okay. Children don't just get up and become independent, especially today, it looks like a lot of people, um, especially with the, our current generation, we seem to be doing everything for our children, even making decisions for them. There are instances where you'd ask a child a question and either a mother or a father will respond. How have you been able to cultivate that independence in them? Well, um, it didn't just start, or it didn't just come about. We went towards it. Before I got myself busy, I was a stay-at-home mom. Okay. And um, we, I didn't have house help. So mm. Yeah, I had just my mom and myself. So the bond was there. We tried to get them to do things for themselves. And I always reminded them that um, I needed to go back to school. Mm -hmm. I needed to get up and go manage my business. So it will get to a point, it will just be them and grandma and they need to do stuff for themselves and also for grandma. And so, yeah, it was a gradual process, but they picked it. And it's, it's amazing when I'm, I'm not around and I call home or even when I come home, orderly. They know what mommy wants. They know how things are supposed to be. So even if they are misbehaving, the, the <laughs> moment they hear mom, oh, okay, so then they start to put things together and all that. So they know mommy is not going to be with them all the time. And also, thanks to leader freak and yeah. leadership come, <laughs> they made it easy for me. At a very young age, I started them with a the camp. Mm. Mm. During those camp moments, they've learned how to be independent. You know, the first time my daughter stayed away from <laughs> us, actually, all of them, I had to drive. <laughs> I had to drive to Achimota day and night mm. just to go and see. <laughs> or to make sure they are fine. They said, Mom, we are fine. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Have you bathed? <laughs> you. you know? And these were six year old mm. and then I think eleven year old. Yes. So it went on and on year after year and then it got to a point I said, Okay, I think the year you guys took us to Pentecost University mm. was such a long distance. <laughs> So after I dropped them off, I did not come back. <laughs> I did not come back until it was time for us to pick mm. them. So the the leadership farm actually really helped my children mm. to be independent, how okay. to care for themselves and also to care for their younger ones. So really, that's it. Mm. I think that's the trick. Okay. Yeah. There's also an element of intentionality where you're planning with your husband. Mm. So there's a plan where this person says, for this year, these are our schedules. Mm. So I would um, tone mine down a little bit, or this year this person is toning theirs down a little bit so that you can be available for the young people or for the family. So you pick from each other, you support each other. So there's that balance as well between the two of you and the family. I like the bit about Letting the children know that you're going to work, you have work to do, there's grandma, so you're not just leaving them, but they need to get to a point where without you, they can be there to support and help themselves. I like that very much. I try in my own little way to have mommy time. <laughs> yeah. So there are times where I deliberately set times for mommy time okay yeah just me my me time <laughs> and so when my me time is up they know <laughs> um except i want to share with my husband mm. it's just me i will not mind you you can <laughs> come and walk you can knock you can you can you can do whatever it's it's me it's my me time mm. and i don't take it for granted at all i usually 
try to do that at least once every week. Good. And usually on Sundays mm. after church is my me time. Mm. I don't cook on Sundays. Mm. I don't stress on Sundays. <laughs> I don't work. I don't read. It's just me. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> oh, sometimes I just take myself out. Okay. You know, groom myself, mm. pamper myself. And then sometimes I just spend time with myself. You know, just listening to your own thoughts. Yes, listening to my own thoughts and doing some introspective, mm. you know. And sometimes I read to myself, I sing to myself, <laughs> and um, I play back, mm. you know, things I did over the, the week, what I think I should have said right, what I did not do right. So for my me time, I don't share. You don't share? <laughs> Reflections are important, so I like that. Yeah, yeah. And then you're learning from your reflections and doing better the next time, so yeah. that's important. What would you say that has been, if, 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 knowing what you know today, if you had to start over, even five years before today, what would you do differently? As a mom, let's let's break it down. So as a mom, what would you do differently? As a boss, what would you do differently? As the older sibling, because the older sibling part is a major one too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as a person, mm -hmm. first, I think I... What I would have loved to do differently as a person <laughs> I think I should have had more time for myself. Okay. I spent a lot of time being a big sister. Mm. And then also being a mother. I devoted all my time and attention. Mm. And so got to a point I felt my career development was, you know, um, lacking behind. And I wish, I mean, with what I know now, I wish I had developed myself mm. first. Okay. Yeah. Yes, so um, after, um, you have more time to spend with your, your, your children. Mm. Uh -huh. Because one of the challenges I had was leaving them and then going back to school. It was so challenging. So I met a few young women who say, oh, I, think it's, I wish to be like you, you know. <laughs> we had your children and um, you are now back in school. I said, you have no idea what you are wishing for. <laughs> because as I sit in class, I'm thinking my children's homework, you know. <laughs> you, you are thinking of what to do, you know, what you are supposed to have been doing as a mother. Yeah. And then you are now back in classroom. So I think... Um, I wish I had developed myself so I could spend more time. But then, uh, within a short span of time, I'm done. And yeah. I, now I'm, I'm, I'm back to being a full-time mom and just <laughs> working for myself. You yeah. sound like you love being a full-time mom. Yes, I, I love being around my children a lot because, um, <laughs> you know, in this day and age, if you do not make time for your children, you are going to lose them. Mm. They have a lot going on in their mind they want to share. They want to have that one particular person they can always go to. Mm. So imagine your child comes back from school or your child needs to talk and mom is not there. Mom is in school or mom is always awake. You will lose them because they go talk to the wrong person, yeah. and then when they get, you know, advice, whether good or bad, they take it, and before you know, it's it's too late. So I love, I love to spend time with my children mm. ever because I hear a lot, <laughs> and then I'm able to, you know, help guide them, even with my eighteen year olds. Mm. Yeah, how's that going? So the different stages of um, mothering. 18 year old, very soon he'll be exited. Yeah. Like he's currently an adult. Yeah. <laughs> how are you feeling? Young adult. How does that make you feel and how's that relationship? 
<laughs> I still <laughs> I still feel like he's still my baby. Ah. You know? And then he'll constantly remind you, Mom, I'm 18. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I'm 18. I said, okay, I've had. <laughs> So, um, you know, every stage presents a new chapter. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I'm loving the 18-year responsible man. He's much mm. more responsible. And he thinks at par with you. Mm. I'm so surprised. At this point, my boy knows my almost all my thoughts. Mm. He, knows, he knows how to get it right, you know. And he, he's now thinking deep as a young man. And I thank God for that. And those who have just entered teenage also, <laughs> also feel like, okay, they have arrived. <laughs> and so trying to remind him constantly that you are just a te- you just entered teenage. Somebody's too, some, someone too is also forcing herself to to the double digit age mm. and so um, <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm learning and enjoying it alongside mm. yeah mm. 